Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. In this video, I'll walk you through our roof rack installation on this 2012 Subaru Forester. So we're gonna begin by assembling the rack here on the ground. You can see all the parts are kind of laid out neatly that you're gonna receive. You'll have two of these side rails, seven crossbars, your front and rear fairings, some edge lock trim, as well as your mounting brackets. We'll begin by getting these crossbars mounted to the side rails. So the biggest thing you'll be looking for here is on each of these crossbars, it will have these machine slots. Those are to accommodate the T-nuts to mount all your accessories to the crossbars once it's installed on the vehicle. Now these we typically put facing up and usually all the way to the driver's side, but as long as they're on the same side so it's uniform, that'll make it easier to use those later on. Once you've sorted that out, you're just going to need two of your quarter 20 button head bolts and washers from your hardware pack. And then we're going to recommend, since you're threading a stainless steel bolt into an aluminum crossbar, that you apply just a little bit of anti-seize lubricant to each of these bolts before threading them in through the slots here in the side rail and into the crossbar. The easiest way to do this is to get all the crossbar started on one side rail and then work your way over to the other side and kind of front to back, back to front, get all those in the other side as well. Next, you can get your fairings installed to the rack. Before you put these in, you're gonna to wanna to grab this edge lock trim. Here on the front fairing, we're gonna be running this essentially from point to point, as you kind of see here. So for that, you can just kind of spread this out following that profile and just mark the end, just past that point, basically with your thumb. And then using something kind of sharp like these tin snips I have here or some large wire cutters, you should be able to cut through that pretty easily. And this is, as you might be able to see here, like an aluminum impregnated edge lock trim. You just wanna make sure that you get any of that exposed aluminum out of there so that it doesn't come into contact with the paint or the powder coat here once that's pressed into place. Now after you have that cut to length, you can just start down at one end and with just a little bit of pressure, you should be able to get this to push up onto the edge of this fairing. You can just work your way all the way across until you have this complete front edge covered. Once you have that trim in place, you should be able to just slide this in between your two side rails and push it down here, line it up with the slots, and then you'll be installing more quarter 20 button head hardware just like you used on the crossbars. However, on the inside, we provide you with serrated flange nuts to hold those in place. Once you have all the hardware for that loosely installed, I'm just gonna recommend that you push it all the way down in its slot and then lightly snug it in place for now. You'll need to loosen this up to make some adjustments later on but having that all the way down will just kind of help use the front and rear fairings to hold the rack up off of the roof surface when we place it up there. Now on your rear fairing, you'll just take the remaining portion of the edge lock trim left over from the front, trim the edges nice and neat, and then you'll be placing that in the center of this fairing before installing it to the rack, just like we did this front one. Once you have the rack fully assembled, we can move to interior disassembly so that we can get the factory roof rails removed. So we're gonna have to do quite a bit of disassembly here in the interior. We're gonna show you this all the way down the passenger side. The disassembly is basically the same over on the driver's side. So you can just kind of repeat that process over there. I'll start here with this upper center console and sunglass holder. You'll need to pop that open. And then there's gonna be two Phillips head screws up here that need to be removed. And then you should be able to get your fingers just behind the edge of this here and pretty much pull straight down, releasing the clips, holding that in place. Once you have that out, you're gonna have a couple electrical connectors here. They should just be on little like thumb tab style clips that you can press and pull those free.
Next, you'll need to remove the visor here. That is just gonna be two more Phillips head screws that you can access once that's pushed down. and just set this off to the side. You'll also be removing the visor clip up here. That's just gonna have two little kind of access holes, one on either side that you can push a small pry tool or a flat screwdriver in. And while keeping a little bit of pressure down on that, pull that free as well. Next, you'll need to pull this A-pillar trim just kind of free from its clips up here. Now we do wanna mention the clip up top specifically is kind of like an airbag retention clip for this. So as the airbag pops, this panel doesn't just go flying. So we're not trying to pull this completely away from the vehicle, just kind of free so that the headliner can drop down past it. So you can kind of pull this door seal down a little bit off of the body there and then get your hands behind this and work your way down, just popping those clips free. And you'll wind up with something like that where you have about an inch gap back here and that is all you need. Then you can come back here and remove the passenger grab handle. So that just has a couple covers up here that can be popped free with your flat screwdriver. Exposing Two more Phillips head screws that hold that in place. Then to release the clip holding this in place, you may just have to twist the grab handle a little bit. Next, we'll be removing this upper B-pillar trim. It may be beneficial here to pull this door seal the rest of the way down, or at least about halfway so that you can gain access behind here just with your fingers. And then you're gonna need to remove the cover for the seat belt adjustment right here. You should pretty much be able to pull just straight out on this. You can always use your pry tool if need be. And then if this button cover pops off, you don't have to worry too much there. There's just gonna be a little metal kind of locking tab that needs to be pulled out and then that can be slid back in place. With that out of the way, you'll need a 14 millimeter socket to remove this factory seat belt mounting bolt. That should be held in with kind of a little retaining style washer there, so you don't have to worry about losing that hardware. Then you can move up to the top. You'll need to remove this little SRS airbag cover here. That is again, just gonna be your little flat pry tool or screwdriver. Kind of work that behind one edge, and then you should be able to carefully pry this out and release its clips. Once that's out of the way, you'll either need a 10 millimeter or a Phillips screwdriver to remove that upper mounting screw. Then you can work your way down to the bottom of this trim piece, pull this lower trim just partially free from the vehicle and pulling out on this back edge and then kind of rotating this section around, you can pop it free from the vehicle. The last thing that needs to be done before moving toward the rear of the vehicle is just pulling this upper sunroof trim if yours is equipped with a sunroof. That's kind of just like these door seals. You just get your hand behind an edge and kind of work all the way around and pop it free. Now as you move toward the back of the vehicle, here in the back seat, you'll also need to pull this door seal free just to allow this headliner to drop down. And then you can remove this grab handle just like we did in the front. Then just like the previous trim section, you'll need to remove this airbag cover panel and remove the one screw in there, again with your 10 or Phillips screwdriver. Then you'll come down here and you'll just be pulling this trim section slightly forward to free up its clips, which will allow us to remove both this and the rear trim section up here. To do that, there's gonna be a small trim piece here, kind of around this seat belt. 
To do that, you'll start with this small trim piece up here around the seat belt. You can get your screwdriver or pry tool up underneath this leading edge. And then you should be able to pull this the rest of the way just using your fingers to free that up. Then just slide it down along the seat belt for now to get it out of the way. Then the last thing before removing this front section is one more Phillips screw, kind of hidden down in here behind this trim panel. That'll need to be removed and then we should be able to just pull this right out of the way. Then to remove this rear upper trim section here, you'll have three more Phillips head screws, one here, one behind this hook, and one up here. Then there should just be a series of clips holding this in place. So you can kind of get your hand behind here and work your way around to pop that free. Now we're not gonna be taking this off the seat belt. So you can just kind of hold this panel out of the way and work that down so it can rest down there out of our way. On this rear seat dome light, you're gonna need again your flat screwdriver. On the driver's side, there's a little cutout that allows you to get that in and pop this cover free. And then there's gonna be two screws that need to be removed with your Phillips screwdriver. With those screws removed, you can just kind of let that hang for now or disconnect it and set it off to the side. That's entirely up to you. Then to allow the headliner to come down, you'll need to remove this rear plastic trim section here. That's just held on with clips across the back. So you can kind of get your hands above there and simply work that down. So in order to access the factory roof rail mounting hardware, you're gonna to have to remove a plastic panel like this on each side of the vehicle. It's just held in with a couple light clips. However, you may have to just kind of lift up lightly on this sunroof structure, and then you can pull this kind of straight out and down and set that off to the side. Now the factory roof rails are attached with studs coming down from the top. So you're gonna have nuts inside of here that need to be removed along this side to get those off. The first one at the very back here is gonna be right in this little opening. You're just going to need a 10 millimeter socket. You can reach up in there and easily access this one. So the next one moving forward is going to be a little more difficult to access. It's right up here above this airbag actuator assembly. You're going to need the open end of a 10 millimeter wrench to get on that nut and start working it loose. It's just a little more tedious here than using the socket, but you should be able to get this one free relatively easily. Now the third fastener moving forward is gonna be right up here again above the airbag, kinda just above this pillar. You'll again need the open end of your 10 millimeter wrench to get to this one and break it free. Then the last two holding down the front leg of this factory roof rail are gonna be right up here, just inside of the front seat. Those again will be a 10 millimeter. You should be able to get in here with a short socket and a small ratchet to get these two removed. After you have all that hardware removed inside, you can come out here and lift these rails off of the factory roof. After the rail's been removed, you just want to come back through with some sort of cleaner, like glass cleaner, something that's not going to leave a bunch of residue on there, and clean up any dust, dirt, and debris that may be in these channels as well as on this upper roof surface before your roof rack mounting brackets go in place. So with this surface cleaned up, we can begin installing the mounts to the roof. We're gonna start here with the front mounting bracket. It's gonna be a two-piece mount. It'll assemble kind of just like you see here. So the lower half will sit down in this rain channel. 
these square holes will be on the flange up and in toward the center of the vehicle. And then the upper half of the mount is going to have a part number and an arrow up here. The last digit in the part number is going to be an F indicating front mount, arrow facing forward. And then those two halves are going to bolt together using these 5 16 elevator bolts that we provide here, giving you an end result that looks very similar to that. To actually get this attached to the vehicle, you're going to start with just the lower half of the mount and the two elevator bolts. I'm going to recommend taking a small piece of tape and just taping those to the bottom of the bracket temporarily. You can kind of leave this overhanging if you want to be able to rip it out later on. But that's just going to help keep those up off of the roof surface here as you go to tighten them up and are installing this bracket so they're not just flopping around loose and potentially scratching that paint. Now to actually get this fastened down to the roof, you're going to be using more quarter 20 button head bolts with washers. However, this time you'll be looking for the nylon locking flange nuts to go down inside of the vehicle. The way we install these, and you'll follow this process along all of the mounts, is you'll get a little bit of black RTV sealant. You'll place a nice bead of that around each of these holes here in the roof. Place the bracket down against that. Kind of work it back and forth just a little bit to spread out that sealant. And then before passing the bolt down through, go ahead and put just a little bit more in the center of that hole. That way you get a nice weather tight seal as you tighten this down. Now, one thing I want to mention as you're passing these bolts down through, you're likely going to push a little bit of that RTV down to the inside of the vehicle as well, which is fine. Just note that as you're holding this nut and getting it started in there, you're probably going to get it on your hand and you don't want to get any of that on the interior, on the headliner surface or anything like that. So just kind of use extra caution while you're completing this step so that you don't make too big of a mess. Then to tighten this bracket in place, you just kind of want to make sure that it's centered on the slots. Then you'll need a 5 hex and a 7 16 wrench down on the inside, and you can begin to snug this up. Once you have the lower half of this bracket tight, you can grab that upper half, double check your orientation using that arrow, and then drop it down on those two bolts. And then find the two 5 16 serrated flange nuts and just thread those on by hand for now. Next, you'll just repeat that same process for the front mount over on the other side. Once you have both the front mounts on, I do just want to point out the mid mount and what it's going to look like. It'll be this small stepped mount here with a single hole in each end. So the smaller horizontal slot is what's going to sit down in the channel. That's going to be back here in the next hole moving rearward. And this one will be labeled with an M to signify mid. These mounts we're actually not gonna put on until the rack is up here on the vehicle. So you can just set those off to the side for now. So then you can move to installing the rear mounts. This is the passenger side rear that I'm working with here. It'll install into these back two mounting holes, just like that so that it steps out to meet the side rail of the rack. And again, it's gonna have an R for rear and a forward facing arrow. Now the only difference between mounting these and the front mounts is you're going to want to leave the bolts just a little bit loose so that you have the slightest bit of forward to rearward compliance right there as we get the rack installed and the side mounting hardware going in. Now with the help of a friend, you can set the rack up on top of the vehicle. As you're doing this, you're just gonna kind of hook the side rail over one side, and then you can kind of pull back to the other side and gently set that down. 
then using more quarter 20 hardware, you can start loosely bolting it in place. So now with the rack loosely in place, the mid mount can be installed. Again, on this one, you're just following the same similar mounting procedure as the other mounting brackets. We'll get the RTV in. We'll use the same quarter 20 bolt with nylon locking nut in the bottom, and then thread a quarter 20 with a flange lock nut through the side here. And once you have the hardware started in that mount in both locations, you can tighten it down to the vehicle roof. Next, you can grab a half inch socket and tighten the front mounting halves together. You just wanna make sure with these that you're kind of lifting up on those elevator bolts to make sure that the square drive portion of that is nested tightly in the bottom bracket, just to keep those from spinning and damaging the painted roof surface. Next, you'll kind of take a step back and take a look at the side profile, kind of eyeballing the gap between the side rail here and the roof surface. This can easily be adjusted using the vertical slots in the mounting brackets. And then once you're happy with that, you can start tightening these up with your 5 30 seconds hex. Once you've tightened all the rack mounting hardware, you're ready to work on adjusting both your front and rear fairings. Now with these, before you fully tighten them down, we're gonna recommend picking up some of this clear paint protection film. That's just gonna go in place underneath this edge lock trim between it and the painted roof surface. That's gonna protect it from any damage from dust, dirt, debris, rocks, anything that might get under here going down the road as things are shifting and moving ever so slightly. Once you have that in place, you can come back and push this fairing down tight to the roof and tighten up the side mounting hardware on both sides. You'll repeat that same process when you're adjusting the rear fairing. However, when you're putting down that paint protection film, it just needs to go under that small center strip of edge lock trim. Now, after you've done that, I'm gonna recommend that you run back through and double check all your mounting hardware is tight throughout the roof rack, and then you can begin reassembly of your interior. So this is just gonna be the reverse process of how you took this apart. We'll start by snapping these plastic trim sections back in on either side. Then we can push the headliner back up and start snapping back in these corresponding clips. You wanna make sure as you're doing this that this rear dome light gets reconnected. And then back here along the back edge, you might just need your small flat screwdriver to work the seal back behind this plastic trim. That'll allow you to get this pushed all the way up. Now we'll grab this larger lower trim section and start guiding it back into place. Once you get that lined up, you can push all the clips back in. Again, you're gonna have to kind of contend with this seal a little bit back here. Just carefully make sure you get the panel behind it. And once you have that all snapped in place, you'll just reinstall the four Phillips head screws that hold this panel in. Now, I actually misspoke briefly in the previous step. You're gonna need to have this front mounting screw here still removed until you get this pillar trim slid down in place. And then that can go in to hold both of those panels in here on the front edge. Then you can slide this seat belt trim back up and snap it in place, followed by this front trim section here. Then you can reinstall the upper mounting screw and snap this cover back in.
Then you can get the grab handle back in, followed by reinstalling at least this portion of the door seal. Then while you're still here in the back seat, don't forget to reinstall this center dome light as well as the cover plate. Then continuing forward, you'll reassemble this B-pillar trim. So once you have the bottom snapped in like that, you'll reinstall this top mounting screw. followed by the seat belt mounting bolt. Next, you can snap that cover back over the seat belt height adjustment, as well as this top cover up here. Then reinstall this front passenger grab handle Then you can move up here back to the A-pillar and snap this trim back in place, followed by the remaining section of the door seal. Then the windshield visors and their corresponding clips can be reinstalled. Then you'll install this upper console, making sure to reconnect both of these wire harness clips before snapping this in place. And don't forget to reinstall both of these Phillips head screws. Then you'll come back and reinstall this sunroof trim to complete the reassembly process. Now with everything reassembled inside and everything tied out here, your installation's complete. So if you guys have any questions about this roof rack install or any other product we offer here at Victory 4x4, feel free to reach out to us. You can send us an email at info at victory4x4.com or give us a phone call at 269-459-8447.